If you're interested in making your own DIY bonsai bench, then this is the video for you. So in this channel as a whole, what I do is bring you along with me on my bonsai journey and specifically targeting people who are new to bonsai. So yeah, if that does describe yourself and if you're into this kind of content, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so that you're notified with my future videos as I release them. But look, getting into the video now. So to start off with, you're going to need some pretty simple tools. So you're going to need a saw, um, any any wood saw will do. Um, you will need a drill. So um, yeah, for my purposes, what I've got is just an 18 volt handheld um, battery powered drill. Um, drill bits just to pre-drill your holes. Um, and then yeah, a couple of attachments to drill in your screws as well. Um, then obviously you will need your screws. So in this instance, I have the pine related screws. I have a smaller pack of um, 50 longer screws, uh, which is about seven and a half centimeters long. And then I've got a larger pack of about a hundred um, short screws that are about three centimeters long. Then you'll need some polish. Given it will be an outdoors bench, uh, the polish is useful just to stop the, um, the wood from aging and rotting under the weather. A brush is, is required um, for obvious reasons with the polish uh, and then a ruler just to help you with measuring your timber cuts and obviously your wood. So in terms of the wood I've got two main wooden sleepers which I'm going to use as the, the main structural components of the shelf um, but if you don't have sleepers any kind of similar um, larger chunks of wood will be fine or you can use just your standard studs as well. So once you've got your two sleepers you will then need um, and those sleepers that I have are exactly 1.2 meters long um, and all of the original cuts of wood that I have are actually the exact same length so just to make things a little bit simpler for you all of these original pieces of, of wood um, can be just at 1.2 meters long so you need those original two sneak sleepers and then you'll need eight lengths of pine so these are the more structural pieces of pine um, so for these I've got seven by three these ones are about six centimeters wide and about a centimeter and a half and then yet yeah, 1.2 meters long if it is an outdoor bench it is preferable to, to use hardwood it does last longer less acceptable to you know um, wood rot and a range of different things um, but given you know, hardwood is generally a lot more expensive uh, look you can get away with pine just make sure it's treated pine and yeah just try and use um, get a polish which is an outdoor polish as well so you can see here the the polish which I've used is an outdoor polish um, it's actually just an oil that you mix with mineral turps and it seeps into the wood so quite useful for outdoor um, wood. So once you've got all of your materials together um, it's pretty basic cutting I have set mine up so it would be pretty easy to replicate so there's only a few um, simple cuts that you you'll need to do um, and then a few optional cuts as well. So the simple cuts that you'll need are purely just the, the arms in the structure. So you can see those here, the, the arms where I've drilled off the, um, the slats on top of those. Um, so those are your supportive beams for your shelf. So you need to, to cut those into length. So for the top shelf, um, it really depends on, on how tall you want that, how deep, sorry, you want that top shelf. Um, but for this, I've only cut them to about 20 centimeters long. I cut a couple shelves for that. Um, and then you'll need to cut a couple for the next shelf down. Um, for that, I've made the, the shelf component an extra 30 centimeters long. So just cut to 50 centimeter pieces. Um, and then for the one below, I've got that another 30 centimeters on top of that. Um, so just 80 centimeters each. So those are your core cuts that you'll need. Um, other than that, you'll have, so at the front of the structure, there's just two little feet. So that's just so that the, you know, it sits without the, the core structural support for the, the bottom shelf resting against the ground. So those will be, um, well, for this, I've got the, the feet extending three centimeters below that lower beam so you want those pieces to be 10 centimeters long um, just so yeah it's, it's nice and even with that lower pine stud being seven centimeters 
thick um, so you can screw it on and extends three centimeters but so those are the core um, aspects of the cut that you'll need very simple just a straight 90 degree cut um, it doesn't need to be exact you can just do it at home now the more complex cuts that you're going to have are going to be for the bracing pieces so the bracing pieces because you're just to build stability in um, in the bench so if you don't use the bracing pieces it'll just have a little bit of a wobble um, in the bench um, but if you do put these bracing pieces in it will take out a lot of that wobble and really make the bench a lot more sturdy so what you want is to cut um, four small bracing pieces for the back so it doesn't necessarily matter um, how long those bracing pieces are, but if you just hold up a bit of timber to the back of your bench, you can just use a pencil or something or one of your screws to mark the timber on the inside where you need to cut it and that'll give you your lines. So it should be a pretty simple cut. Again, doesn't need to be an exact cut. I've done this all using just a handsaw and kind of a <laughs> quick job at that. Um, so one even is, you know, it, it's not going to hurt anyone. Um, and then you want your two larger supportive braces which you can see on the side there so these are probably going to be your most complex cut um, purely because there's that angled cut that that really needs to sit as flush as possible against those sleepers on the right hand side so those main supportive studs again doesn't matter if it's not 100 percent even so long as you've got it there in general it is butting up again and screwed into those supportive studs but yeah if you can do as good as cut as possible that's fine so now that you've done all of the cutting, you can start the assembly. So the first thing I've done here is to put the, the three straight um, supportive beams that will support the, the actual platforms onto the two main sleepers. When you're screwing these pieces of timber together, what you want to do is pre-drill a hole into the timber. Um, now the reason why you want to pre-drill a hole is number one just makes it a lot easier for you to actually drill the screw into the timber. Depending on the strength of your drill sometimes it won't get the full way in so if you pre-drill it's a lot easier if you to screw it in properly. The other benefit of pre-drilling Without pre-drilling, there is some potential that you'll actually split the timber. So definitely make sure you're pre-drilling wherever possible. So when you're pre-drilling, you do just need to make sure that the drill bit that you're using um, is not wider than the teeth on the actual screw that you're going to be screwing in. But you want to make sure that that drill bit that you're using to pre-drill is probably about the diameter of the center of the screw um, just so that those grooves kind of dig into the timber but the center core part of it can just drive in. So once you've pre-drilled a few holes then you can start screwing the um, those supportive horizontal beams onto your vertical stud. So once you've got all three of those horizontal beams on either of your studs, making sure that you've got them, um, you know, facing internally. Um, now you can start putting your platform to get start drilling whatever way works best for you. Um, but yeah, if you start with the um, the internal supportive beams, and that'll just make sure that you've got your um, your vertical studs the right distance apart and just make it a lot easier for the, the rest of your assembly. So when you're screwing these in, what you need, also need to make sure you're doing is using the appropriate screws for each piece. So where you're um, screwing your larger studs, um, because of the thickness of that stud, you just need to be selecting your longer screws. Um, and the same for those smaller pieces where you're just screwing in those non-structural um, slats. You can just use those smaller 3.5 centimeter screws. This, they'll be more than sufficient to, to hold those slats in place. Um, and just make sure when you're putting those slats down as well that you're leaving at least a centimeter between each one, just so there's ample room for the water to, to drip down and in between. On the bottom shelf there, you will also notice that I've got three structural pieces of pine on at the front of that bottom shelf. Um, and that's purely um, yeah, that those pieces of pine are actually strong enough for you to put your feet on um, so you can actually stand on that lower shelf 
um, when you're you know moving bonsai around on your bench. Um, yeah, just because the, the other slats are definitely not strong enough to support your weight. So yeah, that's only an added function just in case you feel it's necessary. Um, but yeah, I find it useful for myself. So once you've got all of those pieces screwed in, then you can start with the polishing. So look, realistically, you could um, do all of the polishing earlier on. So once you've gotten uh, all of your pieces cut into place, you could do your polishing then, so that would just make sure that you would have all of your, um, yeah, all of your exposed cuts polished to help them, um, you know, stay safe against the elements. Um, but it's also easy just to do it at the end once it's all together. Um, you will miss some of the the less exposed. Um, where you know where the, the wood's butting up against the things you won't be able to get in there as effectively with the polish so there's some merit to doing it sooner um, but in the same sense uh, if you did do it first you will also then have to go around and just polish up all of the screw holes just to make sure water can't get in there and and rot so um, yeah, you may as well just do it at this step in the process, but that's up to you. You will just want to apply a couple of coats. So with the, the polish that I have, I just um, do a 50-50 mix with that and mineral turpentine. Uh, and then I just go around and apply a coat of polish. Um, so I flipped it upside down first because I really do want to focus on getting as many coats as possible and good coats on the bottom of the structure as a priority. And the reason for that is because the bottom of those feet are going to be sitting in the soil where they'll be, you know, um, retain a lot more moisture, a lot more potential for them to rot. Uh, so that being the case, I really want to make sure that the, that the polish seeps in. Uh, another reason for that is because, especially for those little uh, pine stud feet at the front of the structure, um, it's an exposed cut that's facing into the soil, so that's another thing where you know the, the end of the timber is a lot more liable to rot. So again, with that end of the, the timber being sitting in the soil, you want to make sure that's protected as much as possible. So apply a coat um, all over, and then what you want to do um, is wait you know, a couple hours or so, it depends on the environment, time of year and, and the polish you're using. Generally a couple of hours in the sun is sufficient time for the polish or oil to dry. Uh, and then you can come around again and apply another coat. Um, look, if you want to be on the safe side, you can apply a third coat on the feet or over the whole structure. Uh, but again, that's up to you. So once you've applied your polish, you're then good to go. So you can then put your structure wherever you want it. Now, because my structure in particular is going straight on soil instead of you know concrete or something that won't retain as much moisture, um, I will be putting some um, you know, just a couple of chocks underneath the, the feet so that they're out of the soil a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's just to, to keep it safe. And again, because I've used pine for most of the structural timber, um, just to, you know, preserve it that little bit longer. But yeah, this will definitely last, you know, a, a number of years regardless of the timber I've used. Um, and look, it's easy enough, especially given that I've got the, the sleepers at the back, they're not going to rot. It's only those front feet that are going to be any issue um, and they're very easy to replace down the road. So yeah, look, I hope you enjoyed that video or took something from it. If you have, then please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so that you're notified with my future videos as I release them. But look, thanks for your time today. Enjoy. Bye.